that time again, time for UFC predictions. This time we're doing UFC 88. Started the bottom of the car, worked my way up like I always do. Tim Boach versus Mike Pat. Um, basically, we're looking at two guys who are decently well-rounded, but not great at anything, in my opinion. Uh, Boach, I think, is the better wrestler and better striker. I think Pat's the better ground guy. Mm. Now, a lot of people are crapping on Tim Boach's cardio uh, based on what they saw in the fight with Matt Hamill. But what you have to realize, that was in Denver, which was high altitude, and there was a lot of guys who had bad cardio that night. And it was also a bit of a late replacement. If I recall correctly, it was also a late replacement fight. So, this is... Sorry. This is a late replacement fight fight for the debut at Mike Pat. Um, never been terribly impressed with Pat. I mean, he's he's pretty good. He's 11-2. Uh, you pull up his fight finder, you'll find he's lost Jason Brills and Todd. Gowenberg lost by decision to Gowenberg, lost by TKO to Jason Brills. The way I see this, I think Tim Boach can take Mike Pat down whenever he wants. I think he can keep it standing if he wants. I think he can not outstrike Pat in terms of number of punches landed because I think Pat has slightly quicker hands. But I think Boach has more power. I think he can control the stand up. I think he finishes this one with a TKO in the second round. Maybe on the ground, but maybe I'm, I'm thinking on the feet. Jason McDonald, Jason Lambert. Uh, this is supposed to be Jason Day versus Jason Lambert, which is more U more Jasons than the UFC probably should have. Uh, Jason McDonald, uh, good grappler, 20 and 9. Jason Lambert, excellent wrestler, got some striking, got some grappling ability, 23 and 8. This is according to MMA Playground, the records. Um, Jason Lambert's a better wrestler than Jason McDonald. He's a better striker than Jason McDonald. He's good enough not to get submitted by Jason McDonald. Basically, I see him beating the crap out of Jason McDonald and stopping him in the second round. That's my opinion. Nate Marquardt versus Martin Campman. Nate's getting a lot of shit for uh, the Dallas latest fight. Uh, I got. I just have to say this to some people who are saying that he, that is the dirt, one of the dirtiest displays they've ever seen. Not really. And over the back of the head happens. It happens in countless fights. You can look at Joe Lozon. You can look at uh, Brock Lesnar. You can look at uh, Carl Parisian. These these guys have all landed elbows to the back of the head, but they're not viewed as inherently dirty fighters. Uh, Carl might be viewed as a bit unstable, but um, that's about it. And the knee, similarly, it's it's worse, but it's I mean, let's put it this way: Kevin Kevin Burns is <laughs> rates the eyes of Anthony Johnson. A lot worse. He did it repetitively. He was warned repetitively about the same thing. Doing this doesn't help your punches except to eye poke. So there was no point. Anyways, Nate, very well rounded. He's a very hard guy to beat because, I mean, those who are better grapplers than him are generally better. Worse strikers. Those, you know, I mean, he's got all those aspects and it's very few people. <sighs> Ooh, sorry, I don't know if I was tired. There are very few people who are better at him than at two aspects. Campman is a better striker than him, but I think Nate can survive on the feet with him. I think Martin Nate's a slightly better grappler, although Martin's a very skilled grappler as well, right? I think Nate is the much better wrestler. I think this fight goes a lot like the Talos Leves fight, only he doesn't get penalized two points and winds up winning unanimous decision. So I think he can take down Campman and win points. I think he can hang his own on his feet. I don't think Campman poses a great threat off the bottom, but we'll see. That's a fight I'm really, really looking forward to, unlike the other two. Uh, next, we have Tiago Chavarez, Kurt Pellegrino. I'm really looking forward to this fight. Both guys are stud grapplers. Both guys have a serviceable striking ability, and both guys have some wrestling ability. Pellegrino, I think, is the better wrestler. I think he wins the first round. The problem is I think Pellegrino's a little prone to getting submitted, like his fight with Nate Diaz and almost getting submitted by Joe Daddy Stevenson. I think Tavares can submit him in the third round because Pellegrino's cardio has also been somewhat garbage in a lot of his fights. See the fight with Diaz, I think. See the fight with Joe Stevenson. Even to a lesser extent, see the fight with Alberto Crane. I just see Tavares being able to push a pace that Pellegrino's not going to match. He's going to tire. He may win the first two rounds, but I think it's finished in the third. Next, we have Matt Brown versus Dong Hyun Kim or DHK. Uh, both guys like to stand and bang. Um, the difference is 
uh, Kim can keep this standing if he wants. I don't see Matt Brown. Matt Brown could not take down Amir Sadala. I don't think he'll take down DHK. DHK can take it to the ground if he wants to. Matt Brown is a little suspect on the ground, and also I think is DHK has massive power in his hands. I see him getting a TKO stoppage in the second round. Next, we have a rematch from uh, quite some time ago. Juan Canero versus Rio Chonin. Now, this fight was supposed to happen in the UFC before, and I actually had Carnero winning. That being said, Carnero is constantly disappoints me, as he did that time, because he ended up fighting uh, Kevin Burns and being submitted by him. So I'm taking Chonin via stoppage due to strikes in the second round, just because I can't pick Canero, even though he is a stud grappler. He is a huge welterweight. Here we go. I just can't pick him. Next, we have a battle of two judokas, Carl Parisian and Yoshiyuki Yoshida. Yoshida is the better judoka. I think Carl's better at other options of MMA. I think he's the better striker. I think he's the better grappler. But Carl tends to run dry on the gas tank. And Carl tends to not be terribly great off of his back when you can put him there. And I think Yoshida will do that. Do it enough to win a unanimous decision. This one might be a split decision, but I th I'm going to go with unanimous. Next, we have Dan Henderson versus Rosame Pajeras. Um, Pajeras is very deadly, very good submissions. But he's not terribly good at being aggressive when he's not in a dominant position. This kind of ignore this. And if you see him, his fights outside of the UFC, he'll take a guy down. He'll sit in that guard for too long. The other thing is, I don't think he can take Henderson down and put him on his back. Henderson also has the better stand-up and the better reach. Generally, I think Henderson just has all the tools required to win this fight and wins a decision. This is also Dan Henderson's third fight, and he's yet to get a win. Normally, you go 0-3 of the UFC drops you unless they really, really want to keep you. I, Henderson could be one of those guys, but I don't think so. So Henderson's going to be really fired up for this fight. Look for him to take it. Next, we have Rich Ace French Franklin versus Matt Hamill. I've gone back and forth on this fight so many times. Between Hamill's wrestling and how the UFC does favor wrestlers, just with the rules, not necessarily intentionally, that's just how it is, and Rich being the worst wrestler and the weak guy and the smaller guy. That being said, we have not seen Matt Hamill do three rounds of very good fighting. People will point to the Bosch fight to say he's getting exhausted, but that's not the fight I'm going to point to. That had extenuating circumstances. I'm looking more at his fight with Seth Petruzzelli when Seth takedown defense really isn't going to be any better than Rich Franklin's. He struggled with him in the later rounds. And Rich is going to be a guy who's going to be in great phenomenal shape and he's going to push the pace and he's going to have to be aggressive. I just see him winning this one by a big UD because Matt Hamill is a tough, tough fighter. He's very, very hard to finish. And the main event of the evening, Chuck Liddell versus Rashad Evans. Get a new nickname, Rashad. Um, okay. Chuck... What do we know about you? We know that you have great takedown defense. We know that your career brought you to number one in the world on some rankings by beating wrestlers. What is Rashad Evans? A wrestler. Chuck should be able to stop Rashad's takedowns. I mean, except for maybe once in a while. And he's very good about getting off his back. That and Rashad, not the best at keeping someone there. Bisping got back up. Uh, pretty much everyone he's ever put on his back has gotten back up. With, I think, the exception of Jason Lambert, who's not so great at that kind of stuff. Chuck has the better hands, I think, by a margin over Rashad. I mean, this is a Greg ja People are going to say this is a Greg Jackson-trained fighter and he's going to have a great game plan. This is true. But the game plan they used to get Keith Jardine the win is not going to work with Rashad. He's not nearly as lanky and he's not that kind of fighter. He's a primary wrestler. That's what Chuck kills. I'm taking Chuck by a knockout in the second round and look for him to challenge Forrest Griffin for the 205 title in the very near future because that is a huge cash cow the UFC is not going to miss out on. So leave your comments, criticisms, uh, whatever, subscribe, and peace.